what you're doing is throwing away me money. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the CJRT House of the Dragon post show. I'm not used to doing post shows. I had nothing planned for an introduction. We're just going to get right into it because Cosmo was still here. And we just want to keep talking about House of the Dragons, so we're going to do basically a part two post-show, whatever you want to call it. I don't really give a shit. You were talking about Jace. Jace Vassar... Valarian? Valarian? Valarian. No, he's, well, he's a uh, Targaryen. Wait. What? Jace, the Rhaenyra's son. Yeah, he's, his last name's Valarian, isn't it? Why? Oh, because it's like uh, Lanor's name. Right, right, right. right Corliss's right. name. And then, also, okay. Corliss, dude, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I probably didn't pay enough attention. Like, obviously, it's it's shown. But, dude, I didn't realize that the sea snake was Corliss this whole time. <laughs> like, until the last episode. Because he's talking about the sea snake. And I am like and I was like, oh. Because th all this time, they're talking about the sea snake. And I was like, who? What are they, why do they keep saying, who is the sea snake thing? Because we never see him go to the sea. <laughs> We're in two seasons. I've never seen this man on a boat in the ocean. <laughs> and, and the only time he did was off screen. And he almost died. Right? <laughs> like, what kind Dude, of okay, snake? I was always so confused. Like, I want to see that. Like, who is he fighting against? Yeah. Who is give, Who is like besting the so called snee, snee snake? Sea snake? <laughs> yeah, they always talked about. So, was he. His army, I assume, was fighting like the crab guy from season one? Yeah. Crab feeder. Right. And, and that guy, he also had leprosy, didn't he? Grayscale. So, he was. Grace? Yeah, so. That's oh, it, his name. It's. Uh, no, no, no. His, his name's the Crab Feeder, but he has a disease called Grayscale, which. It's in Game of Thrones. That's where we're introduced to it. Mm. Um, so basically, it's like this weird, massive disease that slowly turns your body into stone and, like, drives you slowly insane. Oh, and man. If someone with Grayscale, like, if you had, like. If the infection was, like, on your palm and they touched you, you'd be infected with it. Oh. It's literally infection by touch. And it's slow it's and it's painful and it's just mind destroying, basically. Yeah. But yeah, oh, no, that's man. what the crab feeder had. So I'm, that, that's why I was like so freaked out by him. I'm like, I would not want to fight that dude. Damon better be walking in there with like a full, like full face covering, bro. Don't mm -hmm. get touched by that shit. But um. Yeah, Corliss. I I do think Corliss is one of my. I I've liked him a lot. I'm excited to see where he goes. Like I didn't really care for him at all for a while, but you know now we've gotten more background with, you know why he his, his he has bastards too, and he like mm -hmm. with like uh, Adam of Hull and um. The, the bald guy that saved him. Yeah. That guy, I don't, sorry, his name, but. His, I don't know his name either. <laughs> his, his speech against Cor um, Corliss and why he doesn't want to help him so much, you know, all that was really, really powerful. And I'm excited to see, like, where they take him because I think that's an interesting yeah. thing to explore. Do you think, do the, do the two brothers have different mothers, do you think? Or, do, or probably. Like, yeah. Maybe that's why only Adam got picked. Um, it is so sad, too, how, um, Rin Corliss's wife, Rin Rainies. Rainies. <laughs> um and she was talking to him like, Oh, I see your your mother must have been so beautiful. Oh god. Because she knew like that. Wow. She was Stuff like, like that. I really liked her too. She was like, I know you're the sons of my husband. Mm -hmm. But y because you are his sons, you should be honored and you should be respected. You should be treated like you are actually his sons. Yeah, she didn't just... hold the hate in her heart for this kid is not yeah. spoiled, you know. She's like, come on, just don't be an Love your kids, man. Love your kids. If I can have more respect for them than you can, then, like, Corio had to do something. Yeah, the um, women in this show go through so much. It's Dude. Yeah. Princess Rhaenys is a freaking badass, and mm -hmm. I loved her so much. Her final battle against Aemond and Vhagar, I was... I just wanted her to fly away. That's all yeah. I wanted. Like, she, of all the characters to go, why did it have to be her? It was yeah. it was painful and it was heart wrenching. It was a beautiful scene, it was. especially when Maylise looks back at her before she dies, and I'm just like, dude, even your dragon is like, that's like he's she's looking at you like she's saying I'm sorry mm -hmm. as she dies in Vagar's mouth. And I'm just like, oh my god, I don't know what made me cry more, the death of the dragon or the death of Rhaenys. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm, just, oh, I'm gonna drink more wine before I think about it even more. <laughs> But yeah, she she's a really good character where she's like a, a quiet kind of strong. Like she doesn't do have a big crazy speech, but she the things she does and I don't know, it's she goes through a lot and handles it really, really well. So mm. she has like a character. like a commanding presence to her. You know, like she walks through the room and you just feel like that's the person to respect. Yeah. She just has this the queen way about never her. was. <laughs> Dude, that nickname was awful, but yes. Yeah, yes. they just kind of mock her with it. Well, mm -hmm. she's had to take that for years 
I think decades. I would legitimately like slap anybody who would call me that if I were in her shoes. Like I'd be so annoyed so fast. Do you think she ever she wanted the throne? Do you think? I think she did. I think her and Corliss, I think they both knew oh, that bet- Corliss wanted. <laughs> yeah, he wanted the throne. But I think she knew that between her and Viserys, she might have been the better pick. I feel like she probably would have been. Not because she's a woman, where like, it's like, oh man, a woman can do so much better than a man. I don't think that's why. I think it's just because she was a lot more strong willed than Viserys mm. was. Because Viserys made a heck of a lot of mistakes. Yeah. He wasn't a very strong king. He was a wise man, but he wasn't a strong king. And we need both of those things to correlate in order to be a good ruler. Renera. <laughs> yeah. So Rhaenys, she was strong. She was respected. She was loved by the people. She was. She was awesome. She was clever and gracious, but also commanding when it she needed to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like she could have made a very, very good queen had the Lords of the Seven Kingdom just been like, hey, do we go with the man or do we go with the wise woman? We're going to go with the man. I just... <laughs> That's how it was, man. It, I mean, it's it's still now, really. The sexism in the show just makes me want to drive my head through a wall sometimes. And it's a little annoying, but like... So, for like the time was, period, makes yeah. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. It, it makes sense. Which is still annoying. But um Another thing I was thinking about with the show is I I like how I mean like the the two protagon main protagonists are, you know, Allison and Venera. And, and you know, they're both women who I mean, were grown up living with this trauma that men and the male dominant society like put onto them and Yeah. You know, now they're thrust in this position where they can be that ruler but the, the 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 trauma still affects all their decisions and everything that's gotten to them there them to like so I really like that that uh, the finale scene like you know people are criticizing the finale a lot for you know not having a, a big fight and all that yeah. which is, I understand but I mean I also really like that their their last talk in that episode where they kind of reconciliated in a a really meaningful way for the first time in a while in the show so yeah I was gonna ask you what you thought of that scene because I I genuinely was not expecting it. I was completely shocked when I saw that Allison was standing inside that inside that study. But the the fact that Allison was able to come down there and be like, hey, I know I messed up. I I made such a terrible mistake and I don't know how to deal with it. Mm. Um after for so long, like denying yeah. and always blaming Renee and always blaming her her father and, and a lot of it, I mean Otto is the big yeah. catalyst, but she she finally was like, Well, I you know, I was abused and I was manipulated so we get we're here, mm-hmm. but I still I made mistakes, and I'm like, well, how can we stop this war, you know? Yeah. She was finally able to, like, open up a little bit more about her trauma. She's like, I was always someone who was told what to do, and I just, I did what I was told. You were someone who never let anyone tell you what to do. And I was jealous of that. She was jealous. And I thought that was, like, such a cathartic moment Mm -hmm. for the two of them, because I'm like, if they had just had this conversation when they were younger, like, when when Allison just married Married, Viserys. yeah. This all of this probably could have been avoided if they had just like stayed friends. Like, <laughs> yeah, going back close. to the well, the one thing you could fix that it, just yeah, a conversation. Yeah. Or, but yeah, Allison it's, wouldn't have been so paranoid of Rhaenyra then because like she was. I think that's why she was so afraid of Rhaenyra because she knew that Rhaenyra was so like free spirited. So I'm not gonna let someone tell me what to do. Like she was genuinely afraid that Rhaenyra would kill her son, even though we all know that she Rhaenyra would, wouldn't do yeah. it. No. She didn't get along with Aegon in the slightest, but she's no king killer. Yeah, well, now she is, though. <laughs> but because of all of all that happened, of course. Well, but. I feel like it's more <laughs> Damon, because Rhaenyra really didn't... Oh, wait, well, I mean, no, she just no, said she's, right. ba- <laughs> she's, she's right. like, I have to kill him. <laughs> I had to remember all the bastards and, and you have burned. To, and you have to consent to that right now. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, she's been corrupted because of all, all of what's going on, but... No, I'm sorry. It's no. the fact that Allison was so ready to accept that. Oh, I know you need to kill my son in order to win this. I'm like, yeah, I, mean, uh, I mean, do what you got to do, boo. Allison was just like, yeah, no, I get it. I'm, I'm just going to yeah. let you do that. <laughs> like, you really hate your children that much? You I, tortured that boy his whole life, basically. You're just like a lamb to slaughter for his older sister. Damn. Allison yeah, really is a bad I, mom. Yeah, but I, I I do love how the show is not like you still see how she was led to this position and with Otto and I don't know like it's not super cut and dry, which is a sign of 
at least decent writing, so... Yeah. <laughs> can appreciate that. Dude, uh, the writing for the show... I loved it. A lot. Some of the episodes were a little bit weaker than others, but I'm basing that more towards, like, the directors of each show, because I think there was a different director per show, rather mm. than, like, for the whole season. Um... But I love the direction that the show went. I love all the changes that were made to the show as well. Like from the books? Yeah, because a lot of things are super duper different. I, mean, I heard like the um, they didn't try to redeem Allison like at all in no, the books. No, dude, Allison was a freaking monster in the books. Like, you, you remember when Rhaenyra lost her child? Like she was giving birth yeah. and like she lost her child. That was a tough um, scene. It was a terrible scene. Yeah. In the books, when that happened, Allison literally said, "Good." She deserved it. One less target. One less of Rhaenyra's brats in the world. I mean, she was kind of like that in the show too, though. I think. I nah. I'm sort of fuzzy on it. I think. Well, there was also a much bigger age gap between Alicent and Rhaenyra in the books. Like they oh. weren't. They weren't childhood friends. Alicent was just a girl at court who knew of Rhaenyra. She definitely didn't mm. like her because of her like free spiritedness. Um, because Allison was a lot more pious, mm. and again, she had a super controlling father. When, as in the show, Allison became more religious like as she got older because like she saw religion as like a fallback for her to like hey i'm i'm having these feelings i'm having these thoughts like maybe if i go and throw myself into the religion it'll like help me find some kind of peace of mind Hmm. and eventually she basically just like used religion as her excuse for doing a lot of the things that she did and but i feel like eventually she knew hey i can't just rely on this i need to actually confront what i've done what i'm doing and admit when I'm wrong. And yeah, I feel like my healing will begin. A lot of things that, like, conflicted with her, like, I mean, the whole Cole situation. Right? And... <laughs> Dude, what made me so uh. mad about all that is that she gave Rhaenyra such crap about being with Christian Cole. Like, that <laughs> it, it was one time. It was. It, was, it was. And here she is shagging the same dude that she gave Rhaenyra shit about. While Multiple her while times. her um grandson was killed. Oh damn That was a crazy song. Oh man. It, what made me even more mad is that Christian can't even admit that shit. He blames everyone but himself for that. You were supposed to be guarding them, but instead you're smashing the queen. He was supposed to be at Oh mm-hmm. dang. He was guarding the kids. He was protecting the kids. Mm. And he's just like, I'm abandon my post, not find a replacement. I'm just gonna go, you know, hook yeah, up with I my hope- lady friend. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do something interesting with Cole's character. Because, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I like to have characters that are gray, morally gray, you know, because I mean, that's just how it's a lot of people, so. Yeah. How do you feel about Jace and Rayla and all, like, the younger dragon writers? Because you said earlier that oh, you Jace liked how Jace was, like, messing with Ulf <laughs> and stuff like that. Well, no, he, you know, he pisses me off, because, well, I, I see why, because, you know, he, he feels insecure because he is aware of, his his uh, you know bastardness and now these guys are coming in and he's like well they what well, I'm no better than them in a way you know he's insecure and I, yeah. I like that but it is like frustrating for just how how like uh, pretentious he is you know I'm a royal you are some small folk blood you even though it's like yeah which which I mean is true but I I don't know I just hate that like attitude and the, like the royals being all high and mighty which I, they are you know but like. I don't know. Just don't treat people like that. Yeah, I. <laughs> Which is why I, I know um, you didn't like all, but all at the I, table. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like all. I if I had the ability to just jump through the screen and snatch him, I freaking would. He irks me. I don't know. He's funny. I enjoy watching him. But every time I see him, like with his feet up on the sacred stone that table, sitting in the queen's freaking chair. Uh, Hugging the goddamn prince of the seven kingdoms, like why, bro. Why can't, why can't you give the boy a hug? I He's being nice. I, I wouldn't want to be hugged by some random dude who hadn't showered in his entire He's freaking not life. Random. He, <laughs> like, I don't you got know you. He got a dragon. He's cool. I don't know you. I don't know you. Don't touch me. And then again, you're gonna eat a whole bunch of quails at dinner. At least chew with your mouth yeah. full. I, I just love... Close, not full. Close. I really, I'm really excited to see what they do with him because, you know, finally after two seasons, we have a normal a normal citizen of, of the realm <laughs> at the table with these all these high and mighty royals, you know, and he's just a regular dude who, who is loved by the, the, the small folk. You saw him yeah. at, when he's walking in the bar and was, like, talking to him. So, I don't know. I'm excited to see where he goes with that. But, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to be one of the people that um, challenges for the throne later on i don't think he'll be that but i hope he doesn't but 
Everyone I gotta, I gotta go opposite of you. I think he might. Do you think he'll this, be a fan favorite? Oh, sorry. I, I think Ulf is a man that went from having absolutely nothing to having everything. He went from mm. being a dude who smells really bad and basically just weighs off other people to being a dragon lord in the service of a queen, living in a castle. That's true. He might flip to the, the he green might. side. Because he, he could flip because Especially, they might I mean, offer he's him not more being, money. He's not being treated well either right now in a way. So Well, he, he kind of just has that coming to him because he's yeah, acting like a buffoon. Yeah. But I feel like he might get a little overzealous. He's like, yeah, I have all this, but I want more because I'm entitled to it. He has that. He feels like because he's Targaryen, he's entitled to everything. And he, he showed a little bit of that. It, like when he was with the small folk in the the bar too, like talking about mm -hmm. a big game about being, you know, he had he, the, the nickname of yeah. something Targaryen, dragon, dragon lord or something with the in the pub. Yeah, he's like he has like this arrogance about him that I really don't like, and like yeah, a lot of royals are like that, but there's just the, the disrespect. <laughs> Might as well man. make me a knight then. <laughs> make me a knight, and I won't chew with my mouth full. Uh, <laughs> That was, that was slick, right? <laughs> He's... Oh, my God. I don't know what's going to happen to him, but I hope he at least gets slapped or something. I don't know. But Adam of Hull, I'm very excited to see where they go with him because he's a younger dragon rider, but he also seems, like, very devote to Rhaenyra. So I'm very, very hopeful that he will remain loyal to her in the end. I think and, so. He's very professional. You know, yeah, he's straightforward. You know? He's like because he's worked with royalty. He's yeah. worked in discipline as like a ship as a shipwright. Model so. professional. This guy. He's <laughs> yeah. Well, we have to wrap this up. So, any last things that you want to point out, real quick? Mm, no, I can't. I don't know. I can't think of it now. Can't think off the tongue. How about one real quick thing? Predictions. Who do you think, or what do you think is going to happen in the next season? Because we so saw that, like, the war is finally starting to kick off. Armies are marching. Dragons are mm -hmm. flying. Uh, the, the People are pissed, you know. I'm excited because I know that there's... I'm excited for this fight. Because I want Damon and Aemon to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I want to mm. see those... I want to see these two link <laughs> the up. The background boys. <laughs> Let's go. I want to see these two go for it. Because they're picture-perfect mirror images of each other. Aside from, you know, the eyeball. Oh, yeah, the, the second brother? Mm-hmm. The heir and the spare. That's what they are. They're the spares. They're the spares. Yeah. And they still are with their with their, their women on top, you know. Yes. Well, I guess uh, Aegon. Uh, uh, Aemon and ladies are a different story that uh, I don't think YouTube well, would like us talking about. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, no. I guess predictions, I think someone has to flip to make the green side stronger because all they got is Vagar really, at this point. So I think... Ulf is probably the biggest candidate for that. So I think he, he could flip, and then there'll be some conflict. Then I think, um, sorry, the the other the other guy, the other Hugh. Hugh. I think Hugh might sneak in there and have some opportunity. I think that would be cool. I'd be sad if he does, but I could understand it also. Um, but yeah, I can't say too much predictions because I know a good amount about Dance of the Dragons from what I did read and from what I learned from Game of Thrones. So, I can't say shit. Um, but that is, unfortunately, all the time that we have. Thank you for joining us on the CJRT House of the Dragon post-show, part two. You know, I just look in the title of the show. That's what it's going to be named. We'll leave that up to Chandler. I am your co-host, Jill. I am co-sub Cosmo. <laughs> and see you guys in two years with season three. Yeah. Bye. Enjoy the show.